Hello there friends and welcome! For today's Pathfinder Enhanced Set Guide, we have a very special Dwarf Unique Archetype build, the Stone Lord Paladin. And we'll be not only dual wielding for an amazing amount of attacks per round higher than 10 during combat, not counting all of your attacks of opportunity of course, but you'll also be using one of the two special Dwarf weapons, the Dwarven or Grosh. Now for this build you can go with either Aeon or Angel, Thematically, I do believe Aeon is a better choice, as when it comes to Stone Lords, I imagine they are a more stoic type of character, perfect for an Aeon. Plus, through the Aeon Mythic Path, you'll get very powerful abilities like our Gazes, that affect not only all party members, but also debuff the enemies, and will highly increase our attack rolls. Not to mention one of the ultimate dispelling abilities in the game, either for free, on top of all of your dual wielded attacks, and of course the amazing Aeon Mythic spells that are truly befitting a Stone Lord, such as the Edict of Invulnerability for party-wide immunity to any physical attack. Not to mention perfect form, the ultimate Aeon spell for the most absurd stat combo possible. So without further ado, let us get into our Dwarf Stone Lord build. Well, alright, Stone Lord is probably one of the racial archetypes that has the most unique benefits. First, let's cover what you lose. Unfortunately, you will not get access to the main paladin ability, Smite Evil, and also its huge upgrade, Mark of Justice. It's, well, certainly a big downside, I'm afraid, but you get a lot of other stuff to make up for that. Plus, you can always use Scylla on your party to compensate. You also lose the Divine Grace ability, which adds your charisma, as a bonus to saves, not that much of an issue, because you still get all of the Paladin spells, and the Bestow Grace spell does exactly that, although you won't be able to stack it with Divine Grace. Besides that, you also lose Divine Health, so no immunity to diseases. You'll also get Delayed Mercy progression, which isn't the end of the world, you'll still have 3 mercies. Now, for your first unique ability, you have Stone Strike. It's activated as a swift action, so you can still full attack in the same round. All of your next attacks in that round will be treated as magical and adamantine, which is great because it lets you bypass the hardest damage reduction property. But anyways, the best part is you'll get a plus one bonus to attack and damage, which scales every five levels. So that's plus five untyped to AP and damage, at level 20. While the duration is very low, you actually have one use of this per each Stone Lord class level, so you'll definitely have more than enough for many tough battles and the boss encounters too. Second, starting from level 2, you also get the Hearthstone ability, which grants you both a stacking natural armor increase to AC. When I say stacking, it's because it will stack with, let's say, Bark Skin, the most general natural AC source, and also damage reduction equal to half your Paladin levels. So we are looking at 10 at max level. Then at level 3, you get Stone Blood. This will grant you Fortification, which means a chance to ignore critical hits or sneak attacks. Then at level 4, you gain Defensive Stance. As I said, you get a lot of stuff. I mean, we've been getting one special ability every level until now. You can enter the stance for a number of rounds, equal to 4 plus your constitution modifier, and then also an additional 2 rounds per paladin class level past 1. So that's a lot of rounds you'll have to use this too. Anyways, the main benefits are, well, pretty much a plus 2 untyped bonus to AB and also damage, plus will saving throws and even a plus 2 dodge to armor class. Also, temporary hit points equal to 2 per level. It's activated as a free action and will never interfere with other actions that you have for the same round. The only downside is, well, we have two. First, during the actual defensive stance, you cannot move, which is somewhat crippling. But here's the thing, paladins can get the horse pet at level five through Divine Bond, including Stone Lords. You can simply use the horse to move instead. So even if your character is stuck to the ground <laughs> through defensive stance, we can easily bypass that through our trusty steed. The second downside is whenever you end the defensive stance, after combat, your character will become fatigued for a number of rounds equal to twice the time you spent into the defensive stance. Fatigue can be a bit annoying, it blocks charging and reduces some of your physical scores by two, but it's pretty easy to remove too. I mean, as a paladin, you'll have a mercy to remove that on yourself, and there's also the lesser restoration spell allies can easily cast on you after a certain point. Because we have a defensive stance, starting from level 8, we also get to pick defensive powers, that are only applied while under the stance. Some can be useful, but overall the best to me is Smash, because it grants you an extra attack per round, a slam. 
At level 11, you'll get the Stonebane ability. Whenever you use Stone Strike, your attacks will gain the Construct Bane property. This is kind of an issue because it only works against Constructs and there aren't really that many Golem enemies in the game, I'm afraid. Lastly, your Capstone at level 20 is pretty useful and unique too. You'll become immune to Paralysis, Poison and Stunning, and most importantly, critical hits and sneak attacks. Well, when it comes to race, we have to be a Dwarf for once. Their racial powers aren't really anything special, I mean, slow and steady can be pretty annoying because it reduces their speed, but just like with defensive stance, we can ride our horse and horses are super fast, so we'll be using it for movement instead. Hardy though can be pretty useful for the bonus to saving throws against spells and spell-like abilities. For your heritage, I would just go with the basic dwarf, and as for background, the usual street urchin and pickpocket, the other ones won't really do much for you. Now as far as ability points, strength is going to be our main attribute, and we'll start at 17, unfortunately dwarves don't get a bonus to strength, which means 19 is going to cost a lot of points, we don't have enough to spare. Now for this build in particular, in the spirit of trying out different things, especially for the dwarf thematic, I have chosen to go with the special dwarf weapon, the Dwarven Urgrosh. It is actually treated as a double weapon, just like Radius Gnome Hooked Hammers, which means they can be used for dual wielding, despite being just one weapon. You don't need to equip two of them to dual wield properly. Plus, whenever dual wielding your Urgroshes, the offhand is treated as if you were wielding a light weapon, which means lesser penalties to AB. Anyways, because we are going to be dual wielding for more attacks and Dwarven thematics, we need dexterity for the dual wielding feats. 15 is more than enough, the rest you can easily get through belts that enhance dexterity. Besides that, 16 constitution, we are a dwarf and have a bonus to it. And then I would reduce wisdom here and start with 10 charisma. Like I said before, because the Stone Lord Paladin doesn't get Smite Evil, not even the Divine Grace ability, charisma isn't really that important for us. We just need 14 to cast the Paladin spells. And as a matter of fact, the very first headband you can find in the game, at the very start of chapter 1, will grant you a plus 2 charisma, so you'll always have it whenever you want to cast paladin spells. I suppose you could dump intelligence, it's just that then you would only have a single skill point. But you can then start with, let's say, 14 wisdom. The choice is up to you. For skill points, honestly, just use magic device and athletics. Even if they aren't class skills, the other skills won't do anything for us. Besides perception, which you might also want because of the king senses ratio. Now, as far as feats, sadly, this build is somewhat feat starved. We aren't a human and we don't have a class that grants bonus feats, at least not until multiclassing. But for level 1, well, we are going for dual wielding, so two weapon fighting is a must have. Now, please understand that this build, as a paladin, has martial weapons proficiency at level 1, which means you can pretty much equip any other weapon you want. Dwarven or Groshes, they don't have the best critical range, it's kinda low to be fair. So as always, you can also go for the high critical range weapons like Falchions, Scimitars, Four Shards even by getting Exotic Proficiency here at level 1, and even the Grave Singer Great Axe later, starting from chapter 3 onwards. The choice is up to you, I just wanted to try something different. For Date, you might as well go with Torag, because, well, he is the Dwarven God. And as a Paladin, we are restricted to Lopo Good anyways. For level 3, I say you have two choices. You can go with Combat Reflexes now, which lets you perform attacks of opportunity even when flat-footed, and we won't have that high dexterity and initiative, at least not for a while. And of course, also increases the number of attacks of opportunity you can make. The thing is, attacks of opportunity are usually best when you get outflank and improve at critical with your party members for the synergy with it all. If you don't pick this now, you'll get it at around level 11 or so. Otherwise, you can also go with Weapon Focus and Dwarven or Grosh or whatever other weapon you picked. If you were on Hard and Unfair, then I think this is more useful, as enemies tend to have higher AC there. And when dual wielding, we'll get some penalties to AB. At level 4, increase Strength, which is also what you should increase on all of the other levels. For level 5, the choice is simple. Outflank, it's a must-have for any melee ranged build, but especially for dual wielders because the huge bonus when flanking to AB we will apply to both our main hand and off hand too. And be sure to choose the animal companion and the horse here. Divine weapon bond is rather poor, especially after they nerfed elemental barrage not to work with melee attacks. Using the horse for tanking is much better than your own stone lord, even if you have some tanking stuff like hard stone and bonuses to natural armor. 
Well, level 6, we get our first Mercy, and I would go with Fatigued, if only because Defensive Stance will leave us Fatigued after it ends. Now for level 7, be sure to equip a plus 2 Belt of Dexterity to your character, so we can get Improved to Weapon Fighting for yet another attack with our offhand. For your first Defensive Power, I would go with Smash, as it grants you an extra slam attack per round, and we can add a lot of bonus modifiers to damage to this. For level 9, improve at critical, and dwarven or grosh or whatever weapon you picked. Now starting from level 10, is when I would consider multi-classing your stone lord dwarf. Of course, you can also keep this class pure, with 20 complete levels if you prefer. It's just that we are somewhat feat starved, and for the complete feat package I want you to get now, we need a class that grants bonus feats. I'd say you have two choices, Cavalier and Gendarme, this will keep your horse's progression and you'll get the bonus feats we need. I would rather go with Fighter and Mutation Warrior however, because overall I think you'll get more out of this. You'll get more bonus feats, but most importantly the Mutagen and also weapon training. As for level 11 we have two feats, first Boom Companion, so that our horse will still level as you increase Mutation Warrior and then greater to weapon fighting for the last offhand attack. Just like at level 7, for this level be sure to equip a belt of plus 4 dexterity instead. The next levels, until around 15, should be all inch mutation warrior to get what we need from it. For level 12, power attack. The main reason I'm delaying this for now is that, well, at this point we'll have enough boosts to attack bonus to make up for the penalty, and the damage when dual wielding is not as big as when two handing, but at this point it's starting to scale just fine. For level 13, combat reflexes, we can't really delay it any longer. You can also get it at level 3 instead of weapon focus, just switch their order. Then for level 14, we need to get into our shatter defenses package, so dazzling display. It is true that a cavalier would be able to get this for free, but I still think mutation warrior grants you more bang for your buck. Then for level 15, Shatter defenses at last, just in time for all of my other builds, and for weapon training, double weapons as Dwarven or Groshes are part of this group. Even though we only have a single stack of weapon training, the best gloves for our build do increase this by a further plus 2. Now from level 16 onwards, you have a few different choices. You can continue Stone Lord progression, which will grant you extra goodies, including all of the Paladin spells, and another Stone Strike increase, more uses of Defensive Stance and Stone Strike too. You can also still go for Cavalier and Gendarme for the bonus feats. There's the classic Ranger and Demon Slayer Deep 2 for A plus 2 to AB and damage against demons. Honestly, I'd rather just keep it simple and go with more levels of Stone Lord, as at this point we kinda already have almost all of the feats we want. If you go with a class that doesn't give a pet, your horse will start to drag behind. For level 17, Weapon Specialization and Dwarven or Grosh. For your Mercy, at this point your characters can already provide mind-affecting immunity to party members, even your Dwarf if you go with the Aeon Path. So I would go for Stun. It's a rare effect, but it can happen sometimes. For your second defensive power, it won't really matter that much at this point. You might as well go with Increase the Damage Reduction. For level 19, Blind Fight is not needed, as Aeons can get the Echolocation spell way before this point. I would just go for Improved Initiative. You might be asking why I didn't pick the Lunge feat, well, this is a mounted build, and our horse will be moving close to the enemies anyways and taking us alongside it. So he'll pretty much always be in range for our melee attacks, while remaining safe from hits by riding the horse. And if you're wondering about the loss of the Stone Lord Capstone ability at level 20, well, immunity to critical hits and sneak attacks is easily achieved through some spell buffs like Ice Body and Fiery Body, and we can cast both of them thanks to our high ranks in use magic device from scrolls. Alright, now let us give a mythic progression for our Stone Lord Paladin Dwarf. For your first ascension, well, we are a melee build, so close to the abyss is by far the best. The extra gore attack really matters. For mythic level 1, if you are on unfair, then last stand is kind of a must have, otherwise for hard and below, since at this point you can already ride your horse, which will make you almost completely safe, leading strike is amazing for any mounted character, because the pet and the rider will alternate their attacks as you easily proc the leading strike mark. For mythic level 2, mythic to weapon fighting, because dwarven or groshes treat your offhand attack as if coming from a light weapon, with just this feat will completely eliminate 
the penalty should do a wielding to our attack rolls. For Mythic 3, the choice is simple as always, ever ready, especially since depending on what you choose, you'll only get combat reflexes kinda late for more attacks of opportunity. Plus, as an Aeon, we can enhance their power even further thanks to an Aeon Gaze you'll be getting pretty soon. Speaking about Aeon Gazes, please remember that I already have a complete Aeon Guide explaining in depth all of these abilities. For now, I'll keep it shorter and simple. The first case you should choose overall is attack. It's simple, but efficient and always works. Even boosts your whole party too. For the Aeon spells, focus on the ones that grant you buffs, especially ones you cannot get as a Paladin. Two Strike, Shield of Faith and Divine Favor, for example. For Mythic 4, Improve it, Critical and Dwarven or Grosh. Your second gaze, well, the best one is Attack of Opportunity, which stacks with Ever Ready, by the way, for one of the most powerful synergies in the whole game. The problem is, Aeons can only apply two gazes at once, starting from Mythic 6. So for now, chances are you'll only be using the Attack gaze anyways. For Mythic 5, you have two options. If you have a Scald on your party to provide the Pounce ability, then Mythic Charge, otherwise go with Mythical Beast, to buff your pet even further. Well, you might as well pick the damage gaze here, and the other ones you pick don't really matter until around Mythic 8. For Mythic 6, Mythic Power Attack. Even when dual wielding instead of two-handing, the extra boost to damage can help a lot. After all, we have many attacks from dual wielding, and this will apply to every single one of them. Any gaze here? Be sure to pick the echolocation spell at Mythic 6 to bypass the need for the blind fight feat. For Mythic 7, Mythical Beast unless you picked it before, in which case you might as well go for something like Always a Chance. I imagine Unrelenting Assault can be a bit useful for dual wielding characters, it's just that honestly, most battles will be over in one round, so not like the extra bonus to damage is going to matter much. As for Mythic Rank 8, Mythic Specialization and Dwarven or Grosh. Now for your level 8 gaze, you might as well pick Temporal Jump, it's one of the unique gazes that, for some reason, only shows up at this rank onwards. It can be useful, but the thing is, because for most of the game, until Mythic 10, you'll be limited to just two gazes, chances are you'll just be stacking attack and attacks of opportunity anyways. As for Mythic 9, less stand unless you picked it before, it always helps just in case. As for Mythic 10, just go for Mythic Improved Initiative. Alright, now let's cover gear for our Stone Lord Paladin. It's going to be mostly the same as my melee characters, except with a focus on dual wielding. For the amulet, it's as always Valexius, we really want as high strength as possible. As unlike most paladins, we don't really have much use when it comes to charisma due to the lack of smite evil. For armor, you don't need armor for AC at all, as you can simply rely on your trusty horse Steed, which does an amazing job at tanking. So as usual, the chainmail of camaraderie for the huge bonus to damage, especially useful because of all of our dual wielded attacks. For shirts, wandering command for the boost to attacks of opportunity. Then at first, belts that increase strength, later strength and dexterity to allow for some dual wielding feats, but ultimately physical perfection belts. For gloves, Fencer's Gift is as always the best, especially for this build, we get a bonus to dual wielding damage, and it even enhances your weapon training ability too, for a maximum of plus 3. For boots, the usual stampede for high damage when charging. The other boots, I'm afraid, don't really do anything special for this build. For helmets, at first, you'll want headbands of charisma so that you can cast all of the paladin spells in the game. Eventually, you can just go for the Hat of the Bitter End for the bonus to attack rolls, which stacks by the way, and then you combine it with the broken trickster glasses to make up for your low starting charisma. For cloaks, ultimately you definitely want the special Aeo Mythic Cloak because it's by far the best of the Mythic Cloak variants. Before that, just go with Cloaks of Resistance. For rings, the Ring of Evasion can always help, avoid enemy area of effect attacks, Bane of Spirit is a must have too to convert all of your damage into irresistible force, but you don't necessarily have to have it equipped on your Aeon themselves. Besides that, the Ring of Guiding Star can also help when it comes to increasing your initiative. As for braces, the choice is simple for any dual wielding character. Heavy Hand for even more damage added to your offhand attacks. Now let us cover weapons and quick slots. For this build, I decided to focus into Dwarven or Groshes, 
As I've explained before, they are double weapons, so you can use them for dual wielding, despite just being a single two-handed weapon. When it comes to progression, honestly there aren't that many Dwarven or Groshes in the game, I think there's only like 5 or so unique ones. For the start of the game, I would really recommend you just go with Finian. Chapter 3 is when they start to get better, and we can find two of the best ones there. The first is Torex Wrath, which you can easily buy from the exotic merchant in Dresden. It is a radiant weapon, so deals an extra 1d6 irresistible damage to all enemies. And whenever you get a critical hit, you add an additional 46 points of holy damage. Rather good. This is the weapon I would say for bosses and the tough encounters because Radiant is a pretty rare property. And when it comes to the actual holy property for all of your hits instead of just criticals, well, you can always add it to your weapon through some short lasting buffs. The Paladin Holy Sword weapon or Sociel's Holy Lance domain ability, for example. Now, if you want a more useful weapon all around for trash mobs and so on, Certainty of Death can help, as it already has the holy property for all hits. You can find it at Blackwater. For quick slots, extend and lesser extend rods as usual. To increase the duration of some of your buffs, Paladins have some pretty useful ones, but especially Aeon buffs, including Divine Power. The lucky dice can always help, Jarsigax too, when it comes to highly increasing your damage later on, as we can add a lot of extra modifiers to this small 1d4 proc. The old Grimoire is especially useful for a Paladin, Rangers too, because as I said, they have very useful level 1 and 2 spells, level 3 too, and this will grant a lot of extra spells lost for these levels. The Covenant of the Inheritor is just here to remind you how amazing it is overall, as it lets your whole party bypass any damage reduction from demons, but you don't necessarily need to have it on your Aeon, as it works as an aura. As usual, you can always go for any scrolls to cast any spell of any class too, since we have ranks in to use magic device. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Dwarven Stone Lord Paladin build. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time.